In the previous video, we discussed all the ins and outs of how we calculate elasticity. Now let's go into how we actually use this information in order to classify different demand curves. Demand curves can be classified into a number of different categories. Um, first, one category of demand curves we say are elastic. That is, if their measured elasticity is greater than 1. Having a measured elasticity of greater than 1 suggests that any change in quantity is larger than the change in price. Um, as a result, we would say that people are very sensitive to price changes. Prices can change just a little bit and we get these big impacts on the quantity that people are willing and able to purchase. So when we draw the demand curve, it will end up having a, a very shallow kind of shape. It will be virtually flat. Uh, the other category, or another category, would be an inelastic demand curve. This happens if the elasticity that we measure is less than 1. In that case, that suggests the change in quantity is smaller than the change in price. So we can have a relatively large change in prices and not see a lot of change in how much people are willing to buy of this particular good. In that case, when we draw the demand curve, it will tend to be relatively steep. In the extreme case, it could be virtually vertical. Another category would be if we measure elasticity to be exactly 1. This we call unit elastic. Um, the truth is, this is a really strange case that tends not to happen, uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Though I would say this type of demand curve has kind of the odd property uh, where it doesn't matter what the price is, people end up spending the same total amount of money on the good. So say the price doubles, in that case people will cut how much they buy in half, so they spend the same number of dollars on that good. That happens if the demand is unit elastic. Now in the extreme cases, we have perfectly elastic goods. This is a case where even a minute increase in price, even a change of just a penny, would lead to the total evaporation of quantity demanded. So demand in this case would be perfectly horizontal. Now naturally we, we don't expect this would actually happen for people to be that sensitive to price changes, but at the same time there are times that it, it does seem like people are very very close to the sensitive. I might look at something like um, the price of gasoline at a particular station when there's a station across the road from them. If you increase your price just a little bit, suddenly all of the customers who might have come to you start going next door. Now the opposite case would be a perfectly inelastic demand curve. In this case, even a huge change in prices causes absolutely no change in the quantity demanded. So here, people are going to buy exactly the same number of the good, number of the good regardless of the price. Now here, this one is actually even less believable than the perfectly elastic case, because it suggests that even if the price were, say, infinite, people would still buy exactly the same amount of the good. Now, while that might be true for, say, their desire for particular goods, say, certain life-saving um, pharmaceuticals. Uh, their ability to pay, that is, their ability to actually afford the good, certainly becomes diminished as the price goes up. So this kind of case we don't actually see um, on any kind of universal scale. But there very well might be some price ranges where this is actually true. Um, people might be totally insensitive to the price of a good and say, if the good were exactly a dollar more expensive or a dollar less expensive. So within some range, we might have perfectly elastic, oh, I'm sorry, perfectly inelastic demand curves. Graphically, we have four different types of demand curves here. One of them is elastic, one is inelastic, one is perfectly elastic, and one is perfectly inelastic. So take a second, maybe pause this video, see if you can figure out which one is which. Our first one is perfectly inelastic here in the upper left. They're perfectly vertical, would communicate that at any price, you can draw a line across from that price, you hit the demand curve at exactly the same quantity. That is, the quantity demanded is perfectly insensitive to changes in prices. Moving to the right, this curve is just inelastic. While it is not perfectly inelastic, it is still quite steep, so a relatively large change in prices wouldn't lead to huge change in quantities, which is exactly what we mean when we say inelastic. We're not very sensitive to price changes. Whereas the lower left-hand side, here we are relatively sensitive to price changes. A relatively small change in prices leads to a large change in quantity demanded. So we would say this is an elastic demand curve. And there, in the lower right, would be perfectly elastic, that it is perfectly flat. If the price is just a little bit higher, people don't want to buy any. If it's just a little bit lower, people want to buy as much as you possibly would like to offer them. There's also a relationship between elasticity and revenue. 
Now revenue we calculate as being price times quantity. Really it's just a word that we use for say the dollar value of sales in a particular industry. So the revenue of an industry is the price of their good multiplied by the quantity of the good that gets sold. Um, this is also true if you look at an individual business. The prices that they charge multiply by the quantity that they char the quantity that they end up selling and you end up with the revenue for that business. It ends up the revenue is impacted by elasticity. If your demand is elastic, as you increase the price, you end up with lower revenue. The reason being, if you increase the price and demand is elastic, you're going to scare a bunch of customers away. Since people are very sensitive to these price changes, we end up with a much lower quantity, a slightly higher price, which means when we multiply them, we get lower revenue. On the other hand, if demand is inelastic, higher prices actually lead to higher revenue. That is, inelastic demand, we know, is relatively less sensitive to price changes. So you can increase the price and you're not going to scare a lot of customers away. Probably some, but not enough to wipe out the effect of the increase in prices. Right, so we can actually tell whether or not a particular demand curve is elastic or inelastic just based on what happens to revenue when we compare different prices. Here's a little exercise for you. Here we have a straight line demand curve, so we have a set of prices and a set of quantities. Uh, I'd like you to calculate the elasticity and the total revenue. Now here, because it's a straight line demand curve, we can use the simple formula of that uh, change in quantity between any two points, divide by the quantity of the point you're interested in. Here we can see in the first line I did 10, just comparing the first and second row. Change of 10, divide by 40, 40 being the quantity in this row. Um, divide that by, in this case, 1 over 10, 1 being the change in price between 10 and 9, 10 being the price at the first line, which is what we're interested in. Do all the math, you find out it's 2.5. Total revenue is just price times quantity, or in this case 10 times 40, that's 400. Now go ahead and uh, fill in all of the um, other lines. Well, go ahead, pause the video, take a few seconds to do that, and we'll check in a few seconds. And here are the results that you should have come up with. Here we see the elasticity moves from 2.5 to 1.8 to 1.33 to 1 to 0.75 to 0.56 to 0.4. Total revenue, we notice, starts out at 400, then increases all the way up to 490 at a price of $7, but then decreases back down toward 400. This is a very typical shape for revenue if we have a straight line demand curve. The revenue tends to have this nice parabolic shape, where it moves up at some rate and then moves down at roughly the same rate after the peak. All right. Now, one point that I want to draw out of this is that we do see differences in the measurement of elasticity. See, elasticity is different at different points, as we've mentioned before. We also see the trend that we mentioned just a few moments ago. That is, if demand is elastic and we increase the price, say from $8 to $9, there are elasticities greater than one at both those points, we see total revenue actually decreases from 480 to 490. That is, we scared enough people away to wipe out the effect of the increase in price. Whereas if we look at a point that where demand is inelastic, say moving from $5 to $6, we get exactly the opposite effect on revenue. Increasing the price from $5 to $6 actually leads to more revenue, because people aren't running away quite as fast. Expenditure and elasticity have, in fact, exactly the same relationship as revenue and elasticity. After all, expenditure, that is, thinking about expenses for consumers, consumer expenditure, it is exactly the same as business revenue. In fact, they are exactly the same dollars. When I go out and I buy something and I pay for it, those dollars that I'm handing over to the business um, are exactly the business's revenue. It's just, are you watching the money leave as the consumer? Are you watching the money come in as the business? So then we can think about whether the demand for gasoline is inelastic or elastic. Now, in all likelihood, based on this expenditure rule, it's probably inelastic. After all, if the price of gas goes up, I, full, I fully expect that I'm going to end up spending more money on gas in that month. I'm not going to cut back on my, on, um, my purchases of gasoline to make up for the difference. Right. So at higher prices, I, I do tend to spend more money on gas, and I think the same is true for most people. After all, most of the gas we buy is for things like say, commuting to work and the like, things that we are going to do uh, regardless what gas prices are until they rise to the point where they're extremely prohibitive and it's actually worthwhile to go out and buy a bicycle and ride that to work. 
In the next video, we're going to talk about different things can impact the elasticity of de demand and determine whether or not demand is elastic or inelastic.